Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating random numbers that follow the normal distribution using Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, and specifically when working with statistics, it's helpful to be able to create variables that contain random numbers that are normally distributed. And we can do this with SPSS using the compute variable dialog and the function there is rv.normal, but it can also be done using Excel. So I have here a blank Excel worksheet, and on the top ribbon here, I'm going to go to the data ribbon, and then look for data analysis, which is all the way to the right. If you don't have data analysis showing up in the data ribbon, just go to File, Options, Add-ins, and then add in the analysis tool pack and then come back to this view and this item will be here. So select data analysis and then you can see there's many different types of analyses available. I'm going to select random number generation and click OK. This is what the dialog looks like by default. So for the first option we want to select the number of variables. In this case we'll use three. The number of random numbers so this is the number of random numbers in each variable. And let's go with 100. And then we can select the distribution. By default, it's set to discrete. And you can see there's others available like Poisson and binomial and uniform. But we're going to select the normal distribution. Now you can see that changes what appears under parameters. Now we have a mean and a standard deviation. So let's make these data simulate t-scores. T-scores have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And then for output range, I'm going to select A1. So the top left corner of the worksheet. So the dialog is set up correctly now. Hit OK. And you can see we have three variables created that we believe follow the normal distribution. So how do we test this? Well, there's a few different ways, but probably one of the easiest is using SPSS. And I'm going to copy, Control c copy all these data, and then move over to a blank data set in SPSS. So I can actually just move to this top left corner in row 1 and hit control V and it'll paste the data from Excel right into SPSS. Now of course it just uses these generic variable names which we would normally want to change but for the purposes of demonstration I'm just going to leave those the same. I do want to change the measure to scale because it's not unknown we do know its scale. And otherwise, I'll leave the variable view as it is. And back in the data view, we now want to test to see if these variables are normally distributed. And we can test all three variables at the same time using Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. This is what this will look like by default. I'm going to hold down control and select all three variables and move them over to the dependent list. And I'm going to make no changes for statistics or options, but under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf. And I'm going to check off histogram and then check off normality plots with test and click continue and then OK. So that it'll now calculate a few different statistics using these data, but of the most interest are going to be the test of normality. And there's two that are reported using this method, the Kolmogorov smirnov test, otherwise known as the KS test, and the Shapiro-Wilk. There are varying opinions about which test should be interpreted under circ circumstances. I would say most of the time the Shapiro-Wilk 
is probably the best to interpret. And what we're looking for here is a non-statistically significant result. So if we have a non-statistically significant result, the variable would be considered normally distributed. So that would be any result greater than the alpha value of 0 0.05. So 0 0.431 would be non-significant, as would 0.133 and 0.765. If we were going to interpret the KS test, the Komogorov Smirnov test, you can see that for the second variable, we have a statistically significant result. So using this test, variable 2 would not be considered normally distributed. So let's take a look at the histograms. You can see for the first variable, this does look fairly normally distributed. And if we skip down to variable 3, this also looks fairly normally distributed. Variable 2 is the one where there's some question, because one test indicates that it is, the Shapiro-Wilk, and the other, the Komogorov smirnov indicates it's not. And you can see there is a bit of a positive skew here, which you can verify back up in the descriptives under variable Zero, 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 00002, you see we do have a positive skew of 0.5. So the closer to zero, the better in terms of normal distributions. And you can see that the first variable, fairly close to zero, and the third variable is fairly close to zero. I would recommend using the first variable and the third variable because it's fairly clear that they are normally distributed. Now we can also move down back to the histograms. And if we double click on the histogram, you can see up here, under elements, there's an icon here for show distribution curve. That's also available here, this icon. And you can see that by default, it brings up the normal distribution curve, and you can see that this curve looks like what we'd expect for a normal distribution for this first variable. If we move down to the second variable, we do the same thing. I'll just use this method this time. Elements show distribution curve. And now you can see that the, the effect of that skew that positive skew on this normal curve. I hope you found this video on creating random numbers that follow a normal distribution using Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.